Well, hello there. This is a very special web exclusive, as I'm calling it. Uh, in fact, today, when I drove into work, there were a bunch of people gathered outside waiting in line to see Brandon Flowers. And I said, you know, it would be nice if you guys could be part of this, little, this intimate discussion we have with Brandon. So you're all here in the front section. It pays to be early. This is the lesson we've learned here. And now let's, uh, let's bring him out, shall we? Brandon Flowers, everybody. Oh. Hey, there he is. Oh, I want to pull up a um, an instrument box. Do I sit right here? Yeah, why not? All right. How are you? How's it going? It's good to see you. Good to see you. You look very snazzy in your vest. Thank you. <laughs> How's everything? You're uh, well. You're getting ready to go on tour. I am. Or are you a... on tour? I'm sort of on tour. How how can you be sort of on tour, Brandon? They call it a promotional tour. I see. So it's not you know, a full blown tour. Yeah, you play a show here and there, and. Uh, you do these wonderful things, play, play uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Mm-hmm. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> We're both from Las Vegas, as some people know. Yeah. And I love how much uh, Las Vegas plays a role in your music, in the titles of even your, your new album, which is Flamingo, and named after the hotel or after Flamingo Road in Las Vegas? More about the road for me. More about the road. Did you live near Flamingo Road? At one point, yeah. Uh, when I was about 16, my parents let me move back to Las Vegas, and I lived with my aunt, and she lived right on the, right on the corner of uh, Flamingo and Boulder Highway. You wanted to be there to be with your friends? <laughs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> my parents took me to Phoenix, and I wanted to move back, too, and they said no. Yeah, my, my, I, I think I was the last of six kids, and my, my parents were ready to get, get, get it over with. Gotcha. And so you went back, and you, started, you got back into high school. You went to Chaparral High yes. School, I know. I went to rival Clark High School. And that's where Ronnie Venucci Jr. also went. Ronnie, who part of the Killers, who he <laughs> abandoned. <laughs> the band, you, Killers, is not broken up? No. Are you sure? Because, you know, I know you probably know, as a fan of music, mm -hmm. when you see something like that happen with one of your favorite bands, you get nervous that that's it, that yeah, they're going to break it's up. Yeah, it's understandable, but I've been very, I think I've explained it pretty well. You have, but we don't believe you. <laughs> The truth is... <laughs> what is the real story? Now, you, you had these songs. Are these songs like that the other guys said, uh, maybe we should do these songs, or these songs that you came up with after you announced this to them? It's a little bit of both. They were, you know, it was... Um, I, I, I'm always writing songs, and uh, so there's a lot of mis misunderstanding about this, so where people hear me say things like, you know, these were intended to be killer songs, but I say that because I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my band, and when I write a song, I think of it as a killer song. So it wasn't until we realized that we're going to take a long break that I... What is that process like? When you, guys, when you have a song, do you go to the other guys and go, what do you think of this? Should we do this? And then uh, do you fight? Like, oh, I, no, I think this is really good. Uh, this one doesn't think it's good. Yeah, oh, there's, the, you know, it, it's, it's, we're a democracy, so there's a lot of fighting. How can you have a democracy with an even number of guys? That's what it does. We do have a, we do, we, we kind of have a clause there that's uh, <laughs> Santa? <laughs> Santa, if there's a tie vote, we call the North Pole. <laughs> and the elves come down and settle it. What do you do, though, if, if you're split? I mean, how do, is it just whoever feels most passionately? Yeah, that's exactly, it comes to that. It's like if, if somebody really has a good case to argue and they say, look, I really feel strongly about this, it, you know, we, it, it'll weigh. So this album is, is pure spite on your part. You're like, screw you guys. I know these songs are good. I know they're going to be hits, no, no, and I'm no. going to do my own thing. These are yes? Yes. Be honest. No. They didn't, uh, they didn't, no, these weren't songs that, that were rejected by them. These aren't, like, bastard songs. <laughs> these are solid songs. Oh, they're great songs. The album is really, really great. You and I are friendly, and, you know, of course, I was... Uh, hoping and expecting that it would be great, but it, I really, I found myself listening to it over and over and over again. You. you must be pleased with the outcome. I am. I'm proud of it, and I'm happy it's out there now. You worked with some great people on, on this record. Yes. Are these people that, like, your whole life you thought, if I do my own thing, these are the guys I'm going to get? Uh, well, sort of. You know, I, I never really thought about doing my own thing until until it was brought, you know, brought to me that we were going to have a long break. Until you found out your bandmates were lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so now what'll happen is you're going to go on this big tour and as soon as you're done and you're completely exhausted, they'll be, be like, ready to go. let's get back to work. 
Yeah, I'm, it's all right, though. I'm excited about doing the next Killer Records. You are excited yes. about it. Have you guys started working on that already? No. You have not? No, it's going to be 2011. But yeah, the producers, uh, there's some great producers. And they, I, 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 I understood when, when we were, did it, I think partly they liked the music and they wanted to work with me, but I, I think they were kind of trying out for, for the next Killers record. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what it felt like. Really? Is that, and do you think that any of them passed and that you will use them on the end it's, it's, it's very possible. You know, uh, Brandon O'Brien was great and he did three tracks. He did Crossfire, Magdalena, and, and Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas. All great ones, yeah. And you guys should applaud when you hear this. <laughs> People have noticed they've been out in the sun for hours. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then the, the rest were kind of co-produced by Daniel Lenoir and Stuart Price. And Daniel Lenoir did uh, U2. He's, he... U2, Bob Dylan, uh, Peter Gabriel. All pretty solid artists, solid. yeah, in general. <laughs> <laughs> Your musical influences growing up in Las Vegas. I also grew up in Las Vegas, and I know you like these um, like kind of 80s new wave band mm -hmm. and uh, 90s alternative mm -hmm. music, but where did you even hear that music? Because for me, I, you, they, that wasn't offered in the 80s in Las Vegas when it actually, when it was yeah. new. What it was for my, bro my brother, uh, he graduated uh, high school in about 1987, and so he was kind of, he was right there in the thick of it for that, that kind of music. But he didn't get it in Las Vegas either. He actually, his, the story goes, he, he, was, uh, uh, he was a golfer and he was playing in a tournament in Reno, and this, some kid in Reno gave him a mixtape that had the Smiths and the Cure, and then that fed back down to, you know, where he, went, he bought these records when he went home. And then CDs became popular, and I inherited the, com you know, I inherited the cassettes, and that's that's how it all. And some kid <laughs> in all. Reno at a golf tournament. Do you guys know? You remember who my the brother kid was? Know, my brother knows who it is. He actually knows who it is. Yeah. It seems like he should put him on like the record or something. <laughs> his name on a special thanks, thanks or something. Yeah, maybe I should have given him a thanks. <laughs> that kid wasn't Tiger Woods by any chance, no. was it? No. Okay. And um, okay, so now you're on your own. You had to pick a new band, which yes. is kind of like dating new girls or something, right? It's, it's, it was, you know, it was a lot more than I, than I realized it was going to be. It is. Did you audition people or you just know guys and, and go I with them? I was lucky enough to know they're, they're, these guys, we actually had toured with them over the years, some of them, in, in different bands. They're all in different bands. And, and so you guys got together and yeah. uh, put this together. Did you base it on purely on their ability as performers, or was it like, who do I want to hang out around with? For it was a combination. A combination of those things. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. You got, um, you, well, you, you, you worked in the casinos in Las Vegas, right? Yep. Where did you work? I worked at Caesars Palace, and Heard I worked at Gold mm -hmm. Coast mm -hmm. and the Aladdin. Gold Coast and the Aladdin, yeah. The <laughs> beautiful <laughs> venues. <laughs> The Gold Coast is, a, for those who don't know, a local hotel in Las Vegas, but caters mostly to locals. Bowl, yes. Good bowling alley at the Great Gold Coast. Great bowling alley there. What did you do there? I was a bellman. A bellman? Yes. You would carry people's luggage? Do you remember carrying any famous people's luggage? Uh, there was one particular guy that was, well, okay, so there was, every, two, ti two times a year it was really very, very busy at the Gold Coast. And it was when the National Finals Rodeo was in town. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of cowboys. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a rockabilly convention that would come to town. And, and, and so they all, they all stayed at the Gold Coast. And though, I had two particular run-ins there. I, I actually carried Boz Borer's bags. He's Morrissey's guitar player. So that was a real thrill for me because he's a rock in the rockabilly yeah. scene. Did you tell him, hey, I'm, uh, you give him that whole thing? Oh, yeah, I, I laid did. it on pretty thick. <laughs> How did he react but to I that? I was a big fan. He, he wasn't too impressed with me. <laughs> he wasn't. Okay, and have you seen, yeah, I would imagine you've seen him chatted since. with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he's, he's still not too impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the other person? <laughs> um, a guy named Tuff. <laughs> really? A, yeah, you, you know, he, what's that? The Is he a male porn star? What's the, what's the, no, what's the famous movie with, uh, with uh, Dylan from 90210 is in the, the, the you know, <laughs> eight, seconds. eight Seconds. Oh, yeah, the rodeo movie. Yeah. It's about, it's a specifically, you know, it's a true story. It's a sad story, actually. But the, his best friend is Tough, and that guy's a real dude. Really? And I carried it Tuff's bag. Tuff doesn't carry his own bags? You'd think he would. I carried his own bag. <laughs> the name like that. Did Tuff, t was he a good tipper, Tuff? He was all right. Mm -hmm. He was okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you and you were? Did you ever have any like strange Las Vegas experiences where it, craziness goes on? There are two. I, have, I mean, I have two specific ones from from that time, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, 
What happened? <laughs> when you'd go on your break, you'd go down to this, you know, this, you know, the, the trough for the for the workers, and and you get, you know, you'd get your food, or and you'd have. We had walkie talkies, and uh, I hear this. There's a lot of commotion on my walkie talkie, it calls, you know, about calling security, and this is at, this is out of the norm. It wasn't that much happening at the Gold Coast, and so what had happened was, um, is oh, this hooker. <laughs> 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 she, she had, was, 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 it's almost, I mean, it's like out of a movie. She was leaving with this guy's wallet. She took this guy's wallet. And they, he actually caught up to her at the, at, val, at the valet and it kind of, t they were fighting. And she was, she was hitting him in the face with her, high, with a high heel. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, and uh, the reason, I guess it all came full circle, which is my mother had a, had a heart, heart, problem that day and so she found herself in the in the uh, emergency room so the family goes to the emergency room and the guy was there getting treated for, for I, she happened to go to the same hospital for high heel so marks? I saw him twice that day yeah and it, he, I guess he, he, he was kind of out of shape and it, it really did a number on him so that, I guess that's good reason to exercise for the kids watching out there <laughs> catch, catch the... what was the other one he said he had two. Oh, another one. Oh, and I guess another one would be this I was pretty young when we went there and, and uh, when I worked there. And so it was kind of shocking. I, I, wor I, I worked a few graveyard shifts and uh, I, didn't, I didn't love that shift. You know, you go in at it about 10 and get off at, you know, at six. Yeah. When and so it's two in the morning, yeah, and, uh, and I get a call f and a woman wants me to bring condoms to the room. And so I go, I, I, we're not supposed to do this kind of thing, but it was, you, you don't make any money on graveyard shifts. So I was, I was, I was open to this. Really? So not I went, to yeah, so I, because you know, nobody's really checking in or checking out. And, and, yeah. and so uh, I went to the gift shop and I picked up the condoms and I brought them to the room and, and the, the door opens, you know, and uh, I just saw, I saw there were a lot, there was a lot of sex happening in the room. <laughs> More, more than one, than, more than than two one people? yeah, more than two. More people. than one person. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it usually stops right at one. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of flesh, more flesh than I'd ever seen. And do you get how many condoms did you bring? I dropped the box off, and uh, and I got I got twenty bucks out of the deal. So nice, I, nice. Which is all right. <laughs> yeah, not bad. It's like a buck a person. Yeah. <laughs> I think there may have been children born on that night had you not come to the rescue with I that see. box of condoms. Yes. Little swinging babies. <laughs> You did, this is kind of cool, you did a show in a room at the Hilton where yeah. Elvis Presley used to do shows. Yeah. Now, do you follow, do you, uh, familiar with Elvis's music or is, 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 in Vegas he's omnipresent in a way. Yeah, it's very, it's everywhere you go. It's there, there are billboards of him still or, or impersonators of him or and you go into 7-Eleven and there's pictures of Elvis and Sinatra and next to slot machines. I mean, it's, it's, it's constant. And uh, yeah, it was great to play that, to play that room. Is it, did you intend, did you specifically say I want to play that room? Uh, no, it was, it, yeah, it was, there's a lot of history at that Hilton and it's, he played uh, over 500 shows there. And so it's great. They've kept, you know, this, there's a, the great part is there's a, there's a stage that they've replaced, but there's a spot where Elvis used to pray before he went, before he would, before he would walk out. And they saved the wood, uh, this kind of circle of wood where he, that's the part that they preserved and they built, Elvis rebuilt the wood stage. is there at the, yes. uh, wow. So that's, I mean, little things like that. I mean, you don't imagine that, you know, Las Vegas is kind of known for tearing things down and, and so that's one little shred that we've got left. That's, that's like really cool. our Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah. Although actually we have our own Eiffel Tower. We, do. we don't need an Eiffel Tower, don't we? It's nice. I want to ask you one thing because I, there's uh, one thing I've been listening to uh, over and over again. The song, Was It Something I Said? Yeah. Now with the Elvis thing, Tell me if this is a little homage to Elvis Presley and specifically the song Specific Mi uh, Suspicious Minds, all right? I'm in. There we go. I'm caught in trap. I can't walk out <laughs> because I love you too much, baby. Yes, no. Intentional or accidental? Absolutely accidental. It's accidental. awesome that you picked that up. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, I hope there's not a suit from the Presley estate. No, I, I really mean, don't. It's pretty, that's pretty cool. It's great having you here. It really is. Uh, I love talking to you, and I'm very excited about you. Again, well, you probably all have it if you're watching this. It's called 
Flamingo. Brandon Flowers, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Everyone in the audience, too.